Hi, I'm Captain Mike. Uh, this video is in response to a, a viewer that I have uh, that had a question. Uh, she had watched an earlier video that I made about Raku in a microwave kiln. And that's an older video, uh, but when I did it, it was more or less just a concept video. I had tested a couple of pieces in the microwave kiln to see if I could actually get the Raku glaze to react, get it hot enough, because most of the time Raku glazes go up to about 1700 to properly mature, and I'm not going to get there in my microwave kiln. But I gave it a shot, it was successful, they were Raku, if you want to call it that, and really unique. So uh, the young lady uh, got her a microwave kiln and she started making some uh, some raku in it. And her first couple of pieces was really nice, really looked good. And uh, she was using some little tiny, what I call the micro potteries, little flower vases that were really well made. They looked nice. And her first couple of uh, adventures in this microwave raccoon, raccoon, <laughs> raccoon business uh, were successful. They looked nice. Then everything started heading south. And she couldn't figure out why. So she reached out to me and we corresponded a little and I, I tried to help. But I couldn't really get a grip on, on what was going on. So what I decided to do was make this little video and more intensively test Raku in the microwave kiln. And I used just a couple of the glazes I have, some dry mix and some ready mix from a couple of different com companies. and. Uh, so, hopefully, my testing helps some, helped her and helped some others of you. So, Louisa, this one is for you. Now, this is a microwave kiln, and this is my very first one. It is so old that I've even cut down the top here. Actually, that helps me in this video because I can put just a slightly bigger piece in it. Now, here's the problem the young lady had. And uh, I thank her for her uh, comments and asking me the questions. She makes very, very nice little small micro pieces. Of pottery and she had uh, raccooned a couple of them and they worked great. And then she started having problems. Uh, the uh, glaze bubbling on her and some other things happening. Uh, she, uh, uh, we had to kind of correspond back and forth a little bit and it was somewhat difficult. So I decided to do this video, run some extensive tests in the microwave kiln on a couple of different glazes, micro, uh, raku glazes, and see if I can't help her with it. So. When this video is completed, and those of you who have watched it have any experience, jump in and add to whatever I have found out, uh, and maybe we can get her on the right track as to what's kind of going on. Had a lot of failures, had one or two successes. I'll show you what I've got. Let's get on with that part of the video. What we have here is a lot of different pieces that I did over the course of a day or two and uh, I'll show you what some of it looked like before I microwaved it and put it in the uh, uh, chamber to uh, cut out the oxygen and I'll show you a couple of other problems. Now this is probably the first piece I think that I did in the microwave kiln. I look back on my video and I think this is it because I put a candle in it. And I think that's it. It turned out really good. This is Sunspot by uh, Spectrum. That is my go-to Raku glaze. I have about a half a dozen from Spectrum, a one or two from Mako, and a couple of dry mix ones that I got from Laguna. And we'll get into those in just a minute. I don't want to keep this too terribly long. But I just grabbed up some small pieces and stuck a different kind of glaze on them. Stuck them in my microwave kiln for about 12 minutes. I wanted to get them as hot as I could get them. Uh, when they were red hot, I pulled them out and I stuck them in into my reduction chamber and let them have at it. 
So the first couple that I did was using the uh, Laguna dry glaze that I had mixed up. You know, you mix it up with water and then you've got enough to dip. And it just did not do. It's horrible. I mean, it just did not do. Number one, all the glaze run down here at the bottom. Uh, you got some copper on the inside, but I mean, it's totally unacceptable for nothing, anything that you do. It just creeped all over the place. That was the Laguna Blue color, and this was the Laguna re uh, Green, and you can see it kind of did the same thing. Uh, here's the problem with this. I stuck them in there down. I didn't, they dipped, I dipped them, and then I stuck them in there basically wet, and that's a no-no. That causes this problem. So uh, if she's having these kind of problems, anything like that, it's because of the damp clay. Now, I brushed some, made all the difference in the world. Uh, this is some of the Laguna Blue very copper, very nice. I can't get this in the camera. And uh, it didn't crawl at all. It's a little rough looking because, I guess because of the uh, material in the uh, reduction chamber. This is the green and I know that's where it touched the uh, paper that I was using. I was using paper and it did crawl some. Uh, but it is beginning to look like raku, or what we in the West call raku, and uh, I just kept on experimenting. Here was a piece uh, that uh, of the blue that did not oxidize at all, or did not bring out any of the colors. I brushed this, let it dry overnight, and uh, it worked. But there's some issues, and I you see the little white spots on there. I'll show you why I think they're there in a minute. And then, of course, this one was a piece of the green. It came out absolutely great. It was brushed on, waited until it was completely dry. And, uh, uh, like I said, Laguna Green, or whatever the color it is, but it's from Laguna. And it worked out okay. Could be the density of the clay, could be anything. Now, this is uh, the... Uh, Spectrum Sunspot that I used. I've never had one turn that copper. All these were being fired about 12 minutes in the same kiln and uh, they, um, they all did different things. That's pretty, but there was no, no other colors to it. However, I did a butterfly. Same way, same glaze, and uh, Wow, it come out just absolutely wonderful. And I did a little set of honeybees. More copper there than on the butterfly, but again, acceptable. It looks kind of neat. So, what I'm noticing here is, number one, brushing it works better than dipping it. Now, there's some secrets, I'm sure, to dipping it that I don't know uh, that might would help some. But the number one thing is brush it and let it dry thoroughly. Let it dry between coats. I put three, by the way. This is three coats. And as is this, three coats of, of this uh, uh, spectrum. And let it dry thoroughly. Take your time. Don't get in a hurry like me trying to make a video. And let it dry thoroughly between coats. Dry overnight just for grins and giggles. And then fire it. Now. This is a piece of, uh, of this Laguna Blue. It's the, 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 the one that, like this. And you know I told you about the little, the little white specks that are in it. You can see how rough that is, the little white specks all over it. And uh, that, I think, the little bumpity parts are what's making the white specks in this, and it's what's causing some of the other issues that I'm having. Now, I took and filtered out all this particulate, whatever it is. I don't know yet. I'm still working on that. I filtered it out with a flour sifter, one of them little kind of round bottom thingies, and here's what I got out of a couple of gallons of particulate. You can see it's just kind of a 
kind of a, a mess of crystals. I don't notice those crystals being there, or did not notice those crystals being there. When I mixed this, I was thinking that the, that the raccoon was very homogeneous and there was no lumps, bumps, or anything in it. I'm thinking that maybe these crystals formed out of some of the chemicals. Don't know. But I sifted them out. And just for, again, grins and giggles, I placed some of them on this piece right here, a little piece of red clay. This is what they look like when they dry. Okay, just kind of rough looking. So I fired them, and they turned out to be a very glassy brown. I did not oxidize this, or actually put this in a reduction chamber. I'm sorry, it's a reduction chamber. I just fired it in the microwave kiln, let it cool, and it went glassy, and that's what I've got. So I'm not really sure what that material is. It's not important. I wouldn't recommend that you particularly fool with it for a microwave kiln. Get you some Spectrum and or some Maku and go with that. And so, you know, that's kind of where we are now. I'm going to show you what I'm fixing to do next as a final as a final experiment so that uh, maybe we can clear up the uh, issues the young lady's having. Now, there are f uh, four glazes here, actually five glazes here. Uh, these two right here are the, uh, let me get them straightened out here. These are the Laguna glazes. And I put them on, these are on white I think. Yeah, they're on white. And I'm, I, I put them on something that has a very horizontal surface so I wouldn't run too much. I want to see what it, it'll do. If it's going to break, it'll break around the edge here. So we're going to fire those. We're going to fire them all in the same kiln, all for the same amount of time. So I've got those two done right there. I've got my, my sunspot, which is my favorite. This is what it looks like before you fire it. And I have got some... Uh, mm, this is peacock, and it's a matte. It will come out matte. Hopefully it'll have some variegated colors on it, but it will be matte. And this last one I just want to show you because I've had trouble with it. And again, if some of you people have an idea of what's going on here, let me know. This is a brand new, or it was before I messed it up with slopping stuff over it, but it's a very little used uh, container from Spectrum of Armadillo. And it's supposed to be kind of textury, but it does this. It crinkles on the top. It's almost unusable, anything that has a vertical surface. And uh, I don't know why. I really don't know why. I've added uh, uh, Arabic gum, as is recommended in some places, and did different things. It will crackle no matter what I do. So if you have, a, if you have a, an idea of why it does that, please let me know. Uh, because this pint or whatever it is, 16 ounces of uh, glaze is no good to me if it does this. But we're going to fire this and see how it looks when all these crinkles go uh, vertical. Uh, yeah, horizontal. I'll get it right in a minute when they go horizontal. So again, we're going to fire them in this, in this little uh, kiln right here and have a, see what they're going to do. This is the oldest kiln I got or have. And so let's fire these, and I'll get back to you in a couple of hours, and we'll wrap this video up. I have concluded all of my microwave Raku tests, uh, at least those that I could do in, in a limited amount of time, uh, using just a couple of the glazes that were available to me. Uh, now, what I'll do is I'll go over them right quick, uh, some of it will be redundant, but just to kind of keep it all in proper perspective, we're going to start with what I have and where I ended up, or where I started and where I ended up. So, this was the first problem I had, and it was with the Laguna uh, Blue. It's called Dynasty Blue, and uh, it's a nice glaze, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking anybody on this. But this one was microwaved while the glaze was dipped and wet. It crawled all over the place. 
Okay. I took it and uh, brushed it and left it overnight and this is what we get. It's just a nice blue with a little metallic in it. And this was laid down flat in the reduction chamber with nothing on top, just paper around the reduction chamber and paper on the bottom, and I let it catch on fire. I did that for all of these uh, in the second row. So this is what you get. Uh, some copper on the edges, but it's not bad. The next one that I did in this Laguna Dynasty Blue was this one. Lots of copper. But what I did was when I took it out of the microwave kiln after about 12 minutes, red hot, I flipped it over this way and dropped it on top of the uh, reduction material, uh, in this case newspaper, and it brought out the copper. Uh, hopefully you can see that pretty good. It's a little difficult, so shiny, but that's what happened. A lot of blue around in here, so the blue popped up with the copper. That's the way it's supposed to do. And then here's one that I did, and fortunately it broke. Why fortunately I say? Because this part did not have any atmospheric reduction. That's just the blue as it is when it comes out and cools. This is what happens when you drop it in the reduction chamber upside down. Kind of neat, huh? So that is the Laguna Dynasty Blue. The Laguna Dynasty uh, uh, Emerald, it's called Emerald uh, Raku Burst, Raku Burst, Laguna Raku Burst. Again, this one was dipped and it was microwaved damp, not thoroughly dry, and it's a mess. It run the worst of all of them. You can see how it's piled up here on the bottom, yucky, yucky, total disaster. And the next one again was brushed, three coats, and it was fired uh, straight down, 12 minutes. All these were done the same thing, 12 minutes. The next one that I did was this one right here, and it, again, is the uh, Dynasty Burst, which is the green uh, Raku. It went in that way, and you can see how all the copper jumps out when you totally reduce uh, oxygen that gets to the red hot parts. Now this one is odd. This, I showed you this one earlier. It was the uh, spectrum that came pre-mixed. And I don't know what happened on that one. I've never had one go completely copper like that. I just put it down in the uh, uh, reduction chamber just like that and it went totally copper. Okay, This one is kind of where it's supposed to go. You get a lot of greens, you get some coppers, and you get some really neat colors in here. It went down that way. And then the little dragonfly coaster again went down this way. And you can see again uh, that it's a lot of copper in here. Uh, some color, some flash around the edge, real nice. And of course I showed you the butterfly before. That's the way it's supposed to look, at least in my opinion. And again the bees that went in the reduction chambers all straight down. And this other and the last uh, glaze that I used, Raku glaze, was another, uh, this was Mako. This was a Mako glaze, pre-mixed, and it was a matte glaze, which meant it's not going to be shiny. Uh, this one was done quite a while ago, and uh, but you can see how it looks. That's the way it's supposed to look. It's supposed to have some color and of course some dark colors from the ash and all. But that's the way the Raku, and this is called Peacock. So I've done another one just like these right here and brushed it three coats and it broke. And again, fortunately it broke because that's what it looks like when it's not reduced this is what it looks like when it goes into the reduction chamber. And actually, this is more like it's supposed to look. Blues, not a lot of blues on this one. A lot of blues on this one and some, some uh, uh, copper brownish. Looks real nice. So, that was the uh, 
Mako Peacock. And of course, the last thing that I done was took, again, Mako Peacock, Matt, three coats, fired at 12 minutes, and I dropped this one right straight down, and it turned copper too. So, what that's telling you is that if you want a lot of copper, and I kind of knew this from earlier tests with bigger pieces, but nothing quite this conclusive, that if you want the coppers, you're gonna really have to get a good hot blaze going and then drop these things so that there is no oxygen getting to them. You have to experiment. You have to experiment, but that is what you get if you take and lay them face down with no oxygen getting to the stuff at all. This is for the oxygen getting to it, but it's in a reduction chamber. And the only oxygen getting there is being pulled in by the flames that are being smothered. And this is what happens when it's wet. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope that my subscriber, I hope she's a subscriber, but she's a viewer. And I hope this answers some of her questions. And uh, if not, continue to ask. Oh, if you have something else you want me to try, I'll try it. Uh, but this is my video on some pretty intensive tests using the little raccoon, raccoon, listen to me, raccoon kiln that I have. My oldest one, and I used it for all of these experiments. So there you go. I'm Captain Mike, and I hope this has been a help. And I'm out of here.